just when we thought we had our fill of mediocre to shitty superhero films, Blue Beetle comes along. DC's first foray into a Marvel movie. <laughs> You're the Blue Beetle. That could use that arsenal right about now. God, you never ask. Hell yeah. They've been trying to stop away. Batman's a fascist. I couldn't tell if I was watching an Ant-Man movie or a Spider-Man movie or an Iron Man movie. It was like a mix of all of them. All the lame parts of all, all of them the lame parts. combined to make this movie. Yeah. Now this one, I almost feel kind of bad because it is it is sort of low hanging fruit. Yes, exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> there's so much you could like criticize about this movie, but then it's like, ugh, it's just exhausting. And what's the point? No one asked for this movie. <laughs> You can make some decent movies based on B tier, C tier sure. characters. You can even argue that before Iron Man came out, like Iron Man in the comics was sort of a... He was kind of a B-lister. Uh, sort of a B-lister. Yeah. And then of course the movie came out. Yeah, because no one had really done it that way. This is not that. <laughs> no, nothing unique about it. Unless you want to <laughs> really shine a light on the fact that he's the first Latino live action superhero. That which, is what the media is just cramming down everyone's throats right now. No way. See, way. It really is irrelevant. It's the. It, yeah, it's, it's like just more it's, who gives a shit. It doesn't matter at all. They try to push it like, oh, well, you know, because he's got this really great, tight family. Okay, so Latinos are the only ones that are allowed to have families yeah. to lean on. That's it. That's the only thing that makes it unique about being Latino. And it's not just that, it's, it's weird when you're watching it. Is it about his family? Yeah, they play a huge part in the film, but it's almost like you're watching a white liberal's idea of what a Mexican family is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tried telling him. Kind of like really silly and-, and, and yeah, You would it, expect like maybe one or two of them to be kind of silly and then the rest would have different personalities, but they were all kind of the same. Yeah, I, I kind of was thinking about um, The Office. Like in the first few seasons of The Office, the only one that was really stupid was Michael Scott. It's really incalculable. As it went on, like everyone in The Office stupid. progressively yeah. got dumber. Right. And at the end, they were all just a bunch of lunatics. <laughs> That's how his family was. Right, they just all started off as lunatics. Yes. Yeah. So the plot... It, it's, it's literally every it's, other superhero it's movie. every superhero, yeah. He's just some nobody kid. I'm a nobody! I swear! Who ends up getting this symbiotic alien scarab creature attached to him that belongs to Susan Sarandon, the villain. And she's just trying to get it back from him and it grafts onto his body and then he becomes one with it, trying to figure out how to use this and silliness ensues. Well, yes, and like, oh, the, th the thing's making me do things. I don't, I don't have I don't any control. I don't want to do, right. I don't yeah. have any control. It reminded me of some of the scenes when Peter Parker, Tom Holland, got the, the, suit, the special the, yes. like Tony Stark suit and it was like doing all kinds of things. He's like, whoa, and he wasn't ready for it. It was the same shit. This was like, this suit just fully took control of him. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't doing anything on his own. And it's not really towards the end that maybe he's starting to do things on his own, but like his fighting capabilities. It was not just clear come out of nowhere. as to, yeah, like, it was never clear as to how much control he has over it. Like yeah. when does he start taking over from the, from the alien, alien yeah. whatever. Yeah. It was, so this movie was the same story as Star Kid. <laughs> Star Kid. <laughs> so he's got this scarab attached to him now. He just wants it out of him because he, you know, can't accept it yet. You know, being yeah. a superhero, and his whole family's with him, supporting him, and his uncle's trying to help him get this thing out of him. And Susan Sarandon just wants to kill him and take it from him. Yeah, Susan Sarandon is the suburban white uh, yes, Republican, the nuance-free villain. Yeah. villain. Mm -hmm. Just as one note as you could possibly get as a villain, makes for a really compelling and interesting uh, right. character. A lot of Mexican or, or Latin characters in this movie. She just refers to like one of them just as Sanchez, as a different that, name, even though his name. name is Jose. Right, or but something. Yeah. <laughs> and at one point, in the very beginning, at, the, at, the one, at one point, in the very beginning, she fires the the main character and his sister, and and she, she when she's telling them to leave she's like on delay oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay yes racist yeah. piece of shit right, right right very on the nose interactions so another character that is all over the film is sarandon's niece 
Jenny Cord. So another thing, the, their last name is Cord, which is the name of like, I think the second Blue Beetle from the comics. Well, I, don't, I never read that shit. From the 80s or something. Sure. So he was like, he wasn't like a like a superhero the way this new one is with this scarab and these superpowers. You can never get the scarab to work. Right. He was more like a superhero in the vein of Batman where he used technology. Or and Tony a, Stark. Or Tony Stark. Yeah, or, you billionaire know, like, who just billionaire, was really... Billionaire, super genius yeah. who uses, you know, money and intellect to make cool tech to go out and... Cool bullshit tech. Yeah, cool bullshit tech to go out and fight crime, right? So his daughter, Jenny, who is Susan Sarandon's niece, She's like the self-righteous, can do no wrong, doesn't want them, you know, manufacturing weapons. Right. Or kind of like the uh, whole Stark industry uh, yes. angle there, been there, done that. She steals the scarab from Susan Sarandon and gives it to the main character just to like keep safe. Guard the with your life. Right. And then of course his idiot family is like, oh, what is this thing? And then that's the catalyst that allows it to bond with him. So she's like, gets involved in the mix where Susan Sarandon wants to kill her. Well, the lead character also has a crush on her. And the lead character yeah. has a crush on her, of course. The Cord, that family, I guess they're Mexican or Latin American. Well, unclear because Sarandon is not. She's not. That's what and I'm getting at. Like neither the whole, is it's see, like, of her course, brother Ted Cord Of course, is not. The, the morally superior one, though, the niece, you know. Right. She's not. She's not white. Right. But of then course, the the of white course. person in the family is the piece of shit. Yes. The one that just wants to make weapons and take over the world. Yes. <laughs> okay. Who has a uh, Latino lackey as her uh, muscle, her villain? Yeah. yeah. Who ends up having more nuance and a redeeming arc as a villain, but not her. Of yeah. Course. Through the whole film, he's kind of a psychopath, yeah. and like at the last <laughs> moment. The, he gets the, his memory jog. Yeah, he yeah exactly. We get to see like where he comes from, and so we under, he was like a kid, and like you know the U.S. bombed his family, <laughs> <laughs> like all this shit led by Susan Sarandon, who was like on yeah. the ground there, like, right? Yeah. Exactly. And she's like, we'll take him. Yeah, and then let's the, take him for experiments. Yeah. Okay. So of course, like there's nuance as to why he's evil. Right. Zero to Susan Sarandon. Right, right, right. So she you called understand. that guy Sanchez. She said Andale in the, the beginning. <laughs> She's racist, fuck her. Zero redeeming qualities. Right, right, nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. The main character himself, Mr. Sholo, he basically plays the same character he is in Cobra Kai. That's, uh, that's great. I mean, he's fine, but there's just nothing to that character. He, he's he's the, not memorable whatsoever. He's the least offensive part of the entire film. Yeah. Because he's just there. Hmm. They don't really give him much to work with. He's just... He's got nothing to do. He's got nothing to do. He's not unique in any regard. There is a they, formulaic plot that he must stick to. Yes. And that's all he does. And they're like, ooh, the Scarab chose you. And it's like, why? Why? And they never go into They never, they never come go back into to that. that. Like, why you, did you, they choose him? Obviously, it's because he's got a good heart, probably, whatever. But they don't even go so far no, to say that. they don't even say that. Which would have been lame. Like, but, oh, well, he's a good kid. Because he stands up for the girl in the beginning of the movie. It's like, well... The Scarab okay. wasn't there for that. <laughs> right. It wasn't that special of a thing. Yeah. Him being boring, they try to, like, make up for that with the fact that he's got this ridiculous family. Like, his sister's annoying as fuck. His dad was fine. Oh, yeah, he's, like, the only normal person in the He's the only normal the person in the group. family. He's yeah. the only one that, like, kind of sits him down and, like, talks to him. Yeah. Like, you know, you need to find your purpose in life. I'm still looking for mine. You know, he was fine. But George Lopez was... Jesus. Oh, man. Batman's a fascist. We could do a whole video just about George Lopez's character in this movie. Batman's a fascist. Batman's a fascist. He spends... Every other line out of his mouth is something about how either white people suck or the United States sucks. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like, like and bro, then what are you doing here then? There's a scene that you mentioned to me. I, I went to the bathroom during this scene apparently, <laughs> and because uh, I, I had to piss and like fuck this movie, so I got up, went to go take a piss. I come back, and then you were like, "Y'all fill you with later's bullshit scene." <laughs> So, but apparently, like, he tells a story about how him and the kid's father yeah. hopped the border. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then he's just, like, basically shitting on America after that. Yeah, like, well, we had to work, like, 18 hours a day, like, washing dishes in restaurants here. And, it's, you know, really tough life. And it's like, yeah, sure, that's the reality for a lot of people. But you stayed. You didn't go back to where you came from. Because ultimately, yeah, why did you come it's over here? better. It's 24-7 with the victim mentality. Yeah, he, he's got a line in the film and where he's like, oh yeah, the government's used to rounding up Mexicans. And it's like, 
yeah, okay, that's because like 60,000 are crossing every day and like unchecked, <laughs> we were just ferrying them across <laughs> right. the old Putting them in fancy hotels in New York. Like, like, yeah. so, okay, they tried so hard to just craft this narrative that like the most unique thing about the Latino experience is that you're oppressed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, you couldn't focus on anything else to like bring people in who might not be of that ethnicity or background to endear them to you. You're trying to ingratiate people to your culture and you do it by shitting on other cultures. That's not how you do it. Right. That, that's not endearing. No. It's not endearing me to you no. and your, your, your family. They could have been so many good moments, especially with a family. They could have made it less silly, but they focused on just making it stupid. And then when like an actual serious thing does happen, like when a character dies halfway through the movie, all of a sudden they're all like super serious and emotional. And it's like, you, did not earn you didn't that. earn this. Yeah. You didn't earn this at all. Yeah. We're seeing this family react and like they're a bunch of fucking lunatic idiots. And then suddenly, oh wait, we're supposed to be taking this seriously. Right, for this one scene. Okay. No, George Lopez, man. Yeah, they refer to him in the film as the Mexican- Doc Brown. Doc Brown. <laughs> Right, Scott. There were like all these bullshit contrivances like to get out of certain things and certain scenarios and basically they they turned him into like an inventor so we'd have these shitty inventions that would help them right. sometimes. So they present him as a guy who's living on his brother's couch yes. because he can't even get a job. He's a total yes. loser. Spouting like bullshit commie stuff e yeah, here yeah. and there. All the, the Che shit. But he's really and, a genius. But he's a super genius yeah. who can just build all this crazy technology and it's like... I'm sure your services would be needed somewhere if yeah. you were that good. Oh, but you like refuse to take a job at like a corporation or something. Well, no, the, because he's Mexican, the government probably oh, wants yeah, nothing to do with him. Oh yeah, they'll lock him up if yeah, he tries to up. get a job. Yeah, yeah. There's so much nonsense throughout the whole film. And it, it was just peppered in like every, they couldn't go more than a minute without some stupid line. Like, so you, really, have this, you have this like shitty, annoying, generic film. And then on top of that, <laughs> you've got this. And it's like, oh my God, wasting my fucking time. We've been shitting on it up to this point. I did want to try and say a couple good things about it. Bear with me here. Okay. I'll try. I liked that he didn't just automatically get put in a position where he needed to like save the world and having just come into this power is able to do it. Because I've seen quite a few origin movies where the character might stumble, fall, a little bit and then by the end they're just like right master because the, of this power the, the plot needs them to be at that point right yeah this movie kept its story much smaller it kind of reminded me of the first spider-man tom holland movie which is a very simple plot of michael keaton stealing some tech and he had to stop him yeah this i mean he gets like kidnapped yeah when he tries to save his family he fails, and then the whole family has to go rescue him, which is which was terrible. Fucking but, stupid. But he wasn't there to kind of stop that. That ended up becoming the mission of Sarandon's niece. So they didn't give him some kind of oversized problem to solve right off the bat, which was one thing I did like. I can't say that I liked anything about this movie, but I will. I guess the the one positive thing I can say is just that wasn't boring. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like you had mentioned yesterday after we saw it, you were like, every movie we have to compare to it, like every superhero movie that we compare to now, like the the bar has been set by uh, Ant-Man 3. How bad Ant-Man 3 yeah, was. And so yeah. is this as bad as Ant-Man 3? No, it's not as bad as Ant-Man 3. You've made a big mistake. But it's just so painfully generic. It's so generic. It's generic to the point where it's like, wh why was this even made? Well, I've never seen anything like it. Right. Like, there's nothing innovative about it. No. It's it's like a C-list character. You're not doing anything special. Mm -hmm. So why are people going to go see this? And I mean, it's going to make a little money, but it's not going to... It's also, you know, just more uh, salt on the wound of DC right now, where it's like, well, you know, what are they doing exactly? Is this supposed to be... I, I've heard rumblings that this is supposed to be the first film of... The James Gunn new universe. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's but got one foot in the door, one foot out. It's like they're keeping it purposely abstract like that. So if it is a hit, then they can just like, oh yeah, it's definitely in there. But if it's not good, then they could just easily just say, nope, that wasn't that's right. not part but of it. But they they're leaving the door open to 
keep the character if they want but to. But regardless though, no one asked for this fucking movie. And right now, DC can't really be screwing around. Right. But like, they are they, by making this movie. Right. Marvel did this with a few characters because they were doing so well. Yeah. They brought in Guardians of the Galaxy mm -hmm. and nobody knew who the hell the Guardians were unless you were like an avid comic yeah. book reader. And I know you're not like a huge fan of the first one. Of Guardians? Yeah. It, I'm just, it's whatever to me. Right. But it, it introduced a new dynamic into the MCU in terms of the comedy and the style and everything. Yeah. It was fresh. Yeah. And audiences responded really well to it. And they ended up loving these characters that they had never heard of before. That's what this movie tries to do, but it's, fails at. This movie, it's DC's start to that. And it's just a stumble. They were no one's going to remember it. They were really it. banking on like, okay, we're going to make this about a Mexican family. And when we market it, that's going to pull everybody in. We're just going to push the shit out of like, oh, the first Mexican family. And then if you read all the critics, they're just like, it's a celebration of Latin culture <laughs> and like all that bullshit. Not and really. so that's like what legacy media is really pushing to. <laughs> this is the first time I've sat down with a predominantly Latinx cast. Let's go. You know what I mean? Right, but that's not interesting by itself no like, it's well, not who cares but, but is it a good story no no oh, i should only go see it because it's got a mexican family in it like no that's not why i'm going to see it i want to go see it because i feel like seeing this because this is the first latin american superhero <laughs> what the fuck who cares whatever you can imagine i can create let's party ah, yeah! nice choice it's hard to talk about anything else because Everything else that I wrote down is just all woke bullshit. Yeah. But before we get into that, let's quickly rank it, and then we'll spend the rest talking yeah, about... Yeah, that's fine, that's because fine. Because just, I just want to get through some of that shit. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm going to go slightly easier on it than you. I settled on a 5 out of 10, <laughs> <laughs> which I think you're going to just say is too high, is way too high. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Okay. That's, that's not too far off. I mean, you're you're no. in you're in the Ant Man territory over there. But I think you gave Ant Man like a three point five. It's it's above it, slightly but slightly above. Again, this movie it sucked. I will never watch it again. Yeah. Was I entertained? I, okay, I was entertained, but I wasn't bored. Um, whereas <laughs> Ant Man, Ant Man, Ant Man was like painful to watch. This was just Ant Man like, was painful. What? This was just like oh my god. This, Fuck, I've seen this so many times yeah. before and done so much better before. Yeah. The woke shit. It, it just got hilarious at one point. Like, I started enjoying how many stupid lines they were throwing out. In yeah, this that became movie. the best part. It ended up becoming like, ooh, what's the next really stupid line going to be by George Lopez? Yeah. That man's a fascist. They get the entire family involved, first of all. Right. They go to Ted Kord's old mansion, the original Blue Beetle. Right. And they just take a bunch of his tech. They take his flying ship, which looked a lot like uh, Night, Night Owl's Owl ship in Watchmen. Watchmen yeah. In this ship, they find all these weapons, and the, like, the, the sister finds like the power glove. And then the Nana picks up that like Gatling gun that's like... She's like 70 all, years old. All like rainbow colored and shit. Yeah. And all of a sudden now she's like... Nana, Nana, how do you know how to pick that thing up? How do you know how to operate that? Because Nana used to be a revolutionary. <laughs> Nana used to fight the imperialists, and it's like... Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's like mowing them down at one point, the, the seven-year-old. She's year like old. reveling in murdering all these people. She's like, like cackling. Take that, you imperialist pig. You take it's that, like, yeah. <laughs> It was just comical, but I guess that's the point. But it was comical for all the wrong reasons. Also, in, in the film, throughout it, George Lopez is like listening to like Mexican music. And there's a scene where that night owl ship is supposed to be doing something badass, like they're using it and it's supposed to be like mowing down all the bad guys. And so he puts on a song. Of course, you know, it's supposed to be a cool moment, so he doesn't put on Mexican music. He puts on, <laughs> he puts on what does he put on? He puts on Motley Crue. He puts on Motley Crue. <laughs> And it's like, why didn't you put on the Mexican music right there? I would have loved to have seen that scene with all, all these people getting mowed down, like listening mariachi to mariachi music. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? That would have been great. That actually would have been kind of funny. Yeah. But I would no. have preferred that, actually. The yeah. one time you should have done it. And like you mentioned earlier, Cord's daughter, Jenny, the one that steals the scarab. Jenny. They, they make her like the antithesis to Sarandon's character. Oh, yeah. Anyone with the Latin background had to just be a good person. Even oh, yeah, the villain superior. who they redeemed because you turned out oh, his memory was wiped and once he gets his memory back, he's like, oh my God, 
I'm actually a good guy. <laughs> well, then you had that one part where Sarandon's introducing her right hand man to like those like evil imperialist generals, and yes. she's like, she's like, oh yeah, he, this is my right hand guy. Like, like he was part of some like anti communist regime or something, destroying the. The, the innocent communists, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, He's part of the counter-terrorist unit, you know, taking out all those uh, misunderstood terrorists. <laughs> like, they paint him, though. That, that, that's who she wants to sell these weapons to, Rhodey, right? He, he, looked like, yeah. <laughs> he, looked like, he looked like DC's version of Rhodey. That guy should have been Terrence Howard. Next time, baby. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Yeah. They bring, <laughs> they bring in Terrence Howard. He becomes the DC Rhodey. Marvel's Blue Beetle. What are you gonna give the rainbow scale? It got to the point where it was so comical because it was such a silly, stupid movie. I'm still gonna give it a very high rainbow rating, but I'm not gonna go five. I'm gonna give it 4.5. Oh wow, I was just gonna give it a four, but. No, no, it was, every other line in this movie was some stupid nonsense. No, you're right. The only and, reason why I'm not going above a four is because there was like no gay shit or no non-binary stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. That, so was that, a, that was just like, all right, that that's like a- that shit doesn't fly in a traditional uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> They don't go into that, of course. <laughs> no, they don't get into that. Like, I'm surprised the yeah, like the sister wasn't like, well, yeah. you know, oh, they, I got a date with a girl later. Second one, that'll. Oh, absolutely, be absolutely. The case, yeah. gonna, that's what they're gonna do, and then. And she'll be like, I'm sorry, but I'm Latinx. Oh right, yeah. There was no Latinx talk in there. If they had gone that far with it, it would have been five all the way. Yeah, it was that bad. Absolutely, but because bad. because there was none of that stuff, at least. All right, a good point. I'll uh, I'll drop it down a point just for that. But <laughs> but the rest was just yeah. It was definitely up there though. Holy terrible. Shit. Yeah, for a film okay. that claims to be like all about Latin representation and all that, Latin it family, sh it sure it's, just made it's, them look stupid. It, it really did. It made them look like just one note caricatures of themselves. Yeah. When they could have had a family with way more nuance and emotion. Yeah. And ground the film a little more through the family. Because what's going on with him, the Blue Beetle, is crazy. A lot of silliness going on. You know, him flying into space like, oh my God, I'm in space. And then the suit's in control. You could have that be all your silly stuff. Exactly. And then maybe one silly character in the family. Have the George Lopez character. Has the George Lopez character. character. But the rest of the family should have been more grounded. And then I would have cared about them. Anyway, piece of shit. Don't even bother. Unless you want to just laugh at all the woke shit in it.